Um, hi, and welcome to the webinar, Food and Popular Sovereignty in Latin America, Spotlight in Nicaragua. My name is Alicia Grabko, and I'm a board member of Task Force on the Americas, uh, an organization that for more than 30 years uh, has been supporting struggles in Latin America. In February, there was a delegation to Nicaragua, Sandino Vive, co-sponsored by Friends of the APC, Alliance for Global Justice, and La Via Campesina in Nicaragua. The, organiz the organizers were planning an event for April in person, but it had to be canceled because of the coronavirus. Um, through the chat feature, you will be able to ask questions that will be answered at the end of the webinar. You can ask any question you want to know about the current context in, of Nicaragua or anything else. Um, I think there is a general sentiment uh, we all share in this difficult time, and more than ever, there is a need to strengthen people-to-people -people solidarity and unity. We are going to start a discussion today with Fausto Torres. We have three presenters, um, but Fausto, we start the discussion. He's going to join us from Nicaragua. Uh, and we also are fortunate to have Raymond with us, the interpreter uh, for Fausto. Uh, Fausto is the Secretary of International Relations of the Association of Trabajadores del Campo, Rural Work. Association or ATC. He will discuss the construction of, of food and popular sovereignty in Latin America focusing in Nicaragua, um, context of the Sandinista popular revolution and the experience uh, of the world's largest agricultural social movement, La Vía Campesina. Okay, uh, welcome uh, Fausto. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes, claro. Vamos a, bueno, un gusto estar con ustedes y contar con el apoyo de Raymond en la interpretación. Voy a usar It's a pleasure una, to be with you. <coughs> the pleasure to be with una, you this afternoon and uh, to have a translation into English also. El tema es fortaleciendo nuestras alianzas antes, durante y después de la crisis. Okay, I'm going to make a presentation uh, entitled uh, Strengthening Our Alliances Before, During and After the Crisis. Bueno, Vía Campesina es el movimiento mundial que nace en Nicaragua en 1992 y que en el 2002 cumplirá 30 años, o sea que tiene 28 años de existencia el movimiento Vía Campesina. So the Vía Campesina is an international peasant movement that was uh, founded in Managua in 1992 in Nicaragua and it will have uh, 20, 30 years uh, in 2022. Right now it's 28 years old. Este movimiento nace en un contexto internacional eh, muy, muy complejo. La caída del muro de Berlín, como pueden ver en las láminas, la derrota electoral del frente sandinista y la caída de la Unión Soviética. Eh, this, this movement was uh, founded at a time when there were major changes occurring. You had the Berlin Wall that, that fell. You had the uh, electoral defeat of the Sandinistas in Nicaragua in 1990, and uh, the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union. A esto se le llamó el fin de la década de los 80 e inicio de la década de los 90. So this all occurred at the end of the 1980s and at the beginning of the 1990s. Y en ese momento se dio eh, La, los 500 años de resistencia indígena negra y popular y generó todo un movimiento social 
para no conmemorar la llegada de España, sino para conmemorar la rebeldía de los pueblos originarios y campesinos de esta Latinoamérica y el Caribe. And uh, around 1992, it was the 500th anniversary of uh, the uh, arrival of Europeans in the Americas. And there were celebrations of this event. Uh, and uh, at the same time, there was a lot of uh, opposition to this uh, history of uh, plundering. And uh, so there, there was a campaign for the 500 years of resistance to uh, this uh, colonialism. Entonces, eh, somos una, una articulación de personas del campo que defendemos los derechos humanos, económicos, culturales, sociales y políticos y defendemos la producción campesina y además asumimos la lucha de clases como el motor de la historia. So the Via Campesina is a, a world uh, coordination or articulate, articulation of different uh, peasant movements, of uh, people from the countryside. Uh, it defends uh, human rights, economic, cultural, and other rights. It also defends uh, peasant production and peasant life. And uh, it also uh, considers that the class struggle as a means to uh, achieve uh, a democratic society. Entonces, se dice, los, los investigadores dicen que hay más de un millón, mil doscientos millones de familias campesinas en el mundo y que somos el tercer, un tercio de la humanidad. Sin embargo, en esos pueblos hay mucha hambre, pero producimos, el, producimos los alimentos de el planeta. Uh, there are approximately 1.2 bill billion uh, peasant families in the world, and they represent about a third of uh, humanity. And uh, they also are the people who feed the world. Entonces, han habido muchas buenas experiencias, como por ejemplo, el surgimiento del campesino a campesino que nació en Guatemala, in English. Uh, there has been uh, uh, different movements, uh, different initiatives taken uh, throughout the history. One of them is the peasant-to-peasant uh, -peasant movement that was uh, initiated in the, the 1970s in Guatemala. Y que es la base sobre la que nacen los institutos agroecológicos como los que tenemos en Nicaragua, en Colombia, en Paraguay, Brasil, y eh, en Cuba. They are, they are, uh, this peasant-to-peasant -peasant movement is like a, a popular school uh, where people uh, develop their, their uh, knowledge and organize themselves. And it's a basis for the creation of the uh, Latin American Agroecology Institutes, the IALA. Uh, and including uh, the, the one in Nicaragua. Es para promover la agroecología. And uh, the IALAs, the, they promote agroecology. Entonces, ¿por qué si hay muchos campesinos en el mundo porque hay hambre? One might wonder, since there are so many peasants throughout the world, how come there is hunger? Hay catástrofe climática. There are different hay, phenomena, such as uh, climate catastrophes. Hay amenazas de guerra. There are threats of war. Y hay una pandemia. And now, today, we have a pandemia. Entonces, obviamente, eh, nosotros en el estudio que, que hemos tenido, Hemos creado un movimiento campesino de 200 millones de familias campesinas en el mundo. The uh, Via Campesina is a body that coordinates movements that group or around 200 million peasant families throughout the world. Yeah, en, en América Latina somos eh, cinco regiones. Ahí ven We ustedes have... el mapa. 
in uh, Latin America, there are in the Americas, there are five uh, subregions of uh, the Via Campesina movement. Y nuestra estructura es que trabajamos con colectivos. And we work, we work with collectives and uh, commissions. Eh, tierra, agua, territorio. And we work on different topics such as human rights, uh, land, water, and territory. Migraciones y asalariados. Migrations and uh, so, uh, peasant workers, uh, farm workers. Semillas y biodiversidad. Seeds, biodiversity. Pueblos originarios. Native peoples and Afro-descendants. Comunicación. We also have a communication collective. Y formación. And also another one on training. Además, hay el, eh, un, el, el movimiento juvenil, de jóvenes. We also have a, a youth uh, articulation. Y hemos creado el feminismo campesino y popular. And we also have a, a women's uh, a women's uh, articulation with uh, the uh, popular uh, feminist um, peasantry. Y tenemos también eh, las campañas que son para la reforma agraria, contra la violencia de las mujeres, por la liberación de presos políticos, contra los agrotóxicos, por las semillas nativas y contra las transnacionales. We also have different uh, campaigns that we lead, including uh, a campaign for uh, agrarian reform, another one against violence against women, another one for the freedom of uh, political prisoners, uh, against uh, toxic uh, agrochemicals, uh, a, 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 a indigenous seeds campaign, and also a campaign against multinationals. Ahora, voy a los siete momentos más importantes de la vida campesina. In our history, we have seven important uh, mo historical moments. Primero, la vida campesina en los diferentes escenarios y hacia dónde vamos. First of all, there's the presence of the vida campesina in different uh, uh, settings and uh, the issue of uh, its orientation. Where are we going? El primer tema es la soberanía alimentaria. Then we have the basic uh, topic, which is uh, food sovereignty. El segundo, sacar la agricultura de la Organización Mundial del Comercio. Another uh, struggle uh, that was important was to uh, get agriculture outside of the WTO, the World Trade Organization. Hay que defender la agricultura campesina contra la herencia de la Revolución Verde. Then there's uh, the defense of uh, peasant agriculture against uh, the uh, heritage of the Green Revolution. Un modelo del agronegocio frente a la agroecología. It's defending agroecology against uh, agribusiness. También es... Eh, Es prioridad trabajar la cuestión agraria, la reforma agraria. An important uh, priority is to work on uh, agrarian uh, land reform. Or, uh, yes. El otro tema central es la formación campesina. Another uh, issue that's very important is uh, training peasants. Que es la formación política, ideológica y técnica. And this uh, training is uh, political, ideological, and technical. Y por último, eh, la declaración de los derechos campesinos y la agricultura familiar, el diseño de la agricultura familiar. And uh, finally, we have the topic of the uh, UN Declaration on the Rights of uh, Peasants, and the, uh, which was achieved in 2018. And we have uh, the... Uh, 
decade of uh, the family farm farming. Que fueron aprobados en Naciones Unidas en el 2018 y el 2019. Uh, and the declaration was adopted in 2018 and 19. Para es la climática. The climate crisis is a very important issue for us. El agronegocio y el extractivismo. Agribusiness and extractivism are causing uh, this uh, crisis or enhancing eh, it. Este mapa que está en inglés les, les marca las regiones en donde está presente Vía Campesina. Here on this map uh, that you can see on the screen, uh, you have uh, the different area, uh, countries where the Vía Campesina is present. Dos regiones en África, Europa, las regiones de América There are two regions in Africa. You have Europe, uh, the different regions in, uh, in uh, the Americas. Norte America, America Central, Sur America, El Caribe, y el Sudoeste, y Este de Asia. So you have North America, Central America, South America, the Caribbean region, and the two regions of Asia, the Southeast and East Asia, and Southern Asia. Y hay una región nueva que está en el Medio Oriente que la estamos creando. There's also uh, different organizations in the Middle East and Northern Africa that uh, are uh, organizing themselves in the, in the 10th region. Estamos en 73 países en el mundo. There are uh, organizations from uh, 73 country, different countries that are involved in the Via Campesina. Cuando les hablé, hablé de los IALA, son estos centros que tenemos en América Latina para formar a los compañeros y compañeras en agroecología, que están en Centroamérica, Venezuela, Colombia, Brasil, Paraguay, Argentina y Chile. Uh, I said a few words about the IALAs, the Latin American agroecology institutes, who are uh, er places where people can uh, learn and get training in uh, agroecology. And uh, there are several IALAs throughout the Latin America, including in uh, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Colombia, Paraguay, Argentina, and Chile, and Brazil. Obviamente, ahí tienen ustedes la foto de los dos modelos, la agricultura campesina de mujeres campesinas y al otro lado, la agricultura, el agronegocio contaminando con químicos la tierra. Here in these two uh, photographs, you can see the, the two types of uh, agriculture. You have the industrial agriculture, the green revolution agriculture. And uh, on the left and on the right, you have uh, peasant agriculture with uh, agroecology in which uh, you have a family uh, in the cornfield. Bueno, y la ATC, mi organización campesina, ese es el logotipo. And uh, now I'll say a few words about the ATC, which is uh, the Association of uh, Farm Workers of the Nicaragua. Nace en 1975. The, the ATC was created in 1975. Y eh, se constituye oficialmente entre los años 1977 y 1979 se incorpora a la lucha contra la dictadura de Somoza. Uh, in the, the late 1970s, uh, the ATC participated in uh, supporting the insurrection against uh, the uh, Somoza dictatorship. Entonces, eh, la ATC es el centro de la coordinación de la CLOC en América Latina. And today, uh, the ATC uh, plays the role of uh, coordinating the uh, Via Campesina uh, throughout the Latin America in Nicaragua. Nosotros, nosotros ya para cerrar y cerrando, 
nosotros creemos de que hay, eh, el mundo está de rodillas y demanda respuestas urgentes. Uh, at the present time, with the pandemic and what's going on, uh, the world is uh, on its knees and is seeking urgent answers to its needs. Tendremos pronto una disputa mundial del modelo económico, social y político. Very soon there is going to be a worldwide uh, dispute uh, around the, the, the economic, social and political model that uh, we want to have. Y en medio de la pandemia, tenemos ataques a Cuba, Venezuela y Nicaragua. As this pandemic is ongoing, uh, there are attacks against uh, different countries, including Cuba, Venezuela and Nicaragua. En esta lámina pueden ver eh, que la primera tarea a desarrollar es la, es la el trabajo con médicos, enfermeras y la comunidad. Uh, here we see uh, on this slide uh, uh, re references to the fight uh, against the pandemic with uh, doctors. And this y is queremos, a, the number one priority. Pero es importante mencionar el aporte que está haciendo Cuba a través de la Brigada Internacional, de, Internacionalista Henry Rip. And uh, it's important that we underline uh, the very important role that uh, Cuba is playing uh, in the fight against this pandemic uh, with its internationalist brigade, this Henry Reeves Internationalist Brigade. Henry Reeves era un norteamericano de Brooklyn que murió defendiendo a Cuba en 1876. Es un héroe. Y hoy la brigada lleva su nombre de este gringo que luchó por la independencia de Cuba. Henry Reeves was a, an American from uh, Brooklyn, New York, who uh, in the 1970s uh, fought to defend uh, Cuba against uh, the imperialist onslaught. And uh, they decided to name their internationalist brigade in his honor. Y la segunda tarea después de la parte médica es la producción de alimentos. The second main task at, the, uh, at hand is uh, producing food. Ahí ven ustedes las láminas, pongo los áreas a producir. And in, in the, you can see different pictures of uh, different uh, agricultural activities. Voy a leer dos, contra, dos consideraciones de la clock. Que hay que fortalecer no. los sistemas de salud, pero también so hay que... I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read uh, two uh, uh, considerations from uh, the CLOP. Uh, the first one is uh, to uh, strengthen the public health systems. Y hay que darle prioridad a la producción de alimentos, abastecimiento de los productos básicos, y además la vivienda a personas de bajos recursos económicos. And the second a big task is uh, to produce food, to supply basic uh, foodstuffs to uh, all, everyone, all the homes, and also to ensure that uh, everybody who, especially the poor and uh, people who have uh, low, low uh, wages, have a roof over their heads. Y hay que darle prioridad al teletrabajo, porque hay, ahora con esta pandemia todos estamos en el teletrabajo, pero hay que, tiene que tener las garantías de la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, como un empleo digno también. Also, another important task right now is to ensure that everyone can uh, do uh, tel telework, uh, work remotely from their home are remotely from their place of work because of uh, the uh, pandemic right now. There are many people that don't have the conditions to do this and they need support for it. Y tenemos que darle prioridad a los inmigrantes que están en Estados Unidos y en Europa. We also have to uh, be sure to uh, defend and protect uh, 
migrants who are in uh, foreign countries, especially in North America, in the U.S. and in Europe. Porque hay muchos inmigrantes que son indocumentados. Because a lot of them uh, don't have a, a, a regular situation. Hay mucha noticia falsa y mucho pánico. We also have to, to uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, fake news and also uh, panic. There, some people are trying to create, generate panic uh, in the population. Y no debemos caer en la violencia intra, intrafamiliar producto de la cuarentena y el autoaislamiento. And in this situation of uh, uh, confinement, we have to uh, be particularly uh, careful with respect to uh, family violence. Bueno, eh, una foto de la Brigada Médica aquí en Nicaragua. Here you have a picture of uh, the uh, Henry Reeves uh, Medical uh, Brigade from Cuba in uh, Nicaragua, who is it that is working in Nicaragua right now. Y quiero cerrar con una frase muy importante. And I'd like to end with a, a, an important quote. La perturbación emocional no es creada por las situaciones, sino por las interpretaciones que le damos a esas situaciones. So, uh, uh, to be emotionally perturbed is, it's not caused by the situations as such. Rather, it's caused by our interpretation uh, that we have of these situations. Esto lo dijo Albert Ellis, psicólogo norteamericano. This is a quote from a psychologist uh, named Albert Ellis from the U.S. En resumen, vivimos un virus muy peligroso en el planeta Tierra. So to summarize, we are living uh, with a very dangerous uh, virus right now throughout the world. Tenemos que promover la salud pública y salud comunitaria. We have to promote uh, Public and community health. Entonces, amigos, eh, aliado, ¿qué pasará después? Hay que estar preparado. Este virus es de clase, ataca ricos y pobres. ¿Y qué haremos ahora? Es la tarea que nos asume toda esta tarde. And so, uh, we have to ask ourselves and ask our allies also, what is going to happen? We have to prepare ourselves. This virus uh, doesn't discriminate between rich and poor. So this is what uh, we want you to, uh, to ponder on uh, this afternoon. What are we going to do? Y cierro con la frase de Mahatma Gandhi. La tierra tiene todo lo suficiente para satisfacer las necesidades de todos. Pero no las ambiciones de unos pocos o unos cuantos. So I'll end with a quote from uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, the earth has the, everything to satisfy the needs of all, but it does have sufficient to uh, satisfy the ambitions of, a few, of the few. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Eh, quise ajustarme a los 45 minutos, no sé si cumplí con el tiempo. Sí, muy bien, Fausto, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Ahora vamos a invitar a Erika Taqueo, uh, of the International Relations Secretary of the ATC and Coordinators of Friends of the ATC. Uh, welcome, Erika. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Erika. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, uh, Task Force on the Americas, for helping to uh, re-envision how to organize this event that we wanted to do in person with all of our friends in the Bay Area in April. Um, I'm going to be very brief, kind of a transition point between what Fausto has just talked about with the birth of Cloak 
at the Latin American and Caribbean level, uh, continental level, as well as La Via Campesina International, international and some of the historic moments and current tasks of uh, this movement of peasant organizations. Uh, so the bridge between Fausto and Carissa, who's going to talk about her experience on the recent Sandino Vive delegation uh, that took place in February here in Nicaragua. Uh, maybe I'll just say quickly that uh, I grew up in the States. I'm originally from Portland, uh, where my parents still live, but I'm based here in Managua, Nicaragua with the uh, International Relations Secretariat of the ATC, and also have some tasks within the Operating Secretariat of the CLOC, so the Continental Articulation uh, of our social movement. And um, another task is to coordinate the Friends of the ATC Solidarity Network, um, which is how uh, people like Carissa came to Nicaragua. Uh, Friends of the ATC is a solidarity network with the Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo uh, or Rural Workers Association of Nicaragua, the organization that uh, is our national organization here in, uh, at the Nicaraguan level. But as Fausto mentioned a little bit, uh, this organization was born in the context of the Sandinista Popular Revolution and is also a founding member of both CLOC at the continental, continental level and La Via Campesina internationally. So as friends of the ATC, we do a lot of solidarity organizing and construction of solidarity with the ATC, but we also touch upon a lot of solidarity organizing with the Sandinista Revolution, with CLOC, with La Via Campesina, Fausto mentioned the IALAS, the Latin American Institutes of Agroecology. So uh, we touch upon a wide range of topics. We, as a solidarity network, there are many different people coming from different walks of life with different interests but we work to practice two central values, uh, which I think uh, Task Force on the Americas also shares. Uh, one is internationalism, understanding that we might be living in different places with different local realities, but that we have common enemies. We're all in a collective struggle against capitalism, against imperialism, against patriarchy, and it's important to exchange with one another and find ways to unite against these common enemies. The second central value that we promote is anti-imperialism, keeping in mind that many of us uh, who are part of Friends of the EGC are from the United States or are based in the United States and are not in agreement with the actions of the US government, both at a national level and within our own communities in the US, but also internationally. So sticking up and standing up against what the US government is doing and saying that enough is enough. Um, as friends of the ATC, we think that one of the most important ways to build solidarity is through having people to people exchanges, exchanges of experiences from people from different walks of life, which is why we like to have people like Carissa, others who are on this call. Uh, I think we have Carolina, maybe David Paul is here, Susan, Stan, Mackenzie, I saw some others on the list who have come here to Nicaragua to see with their own eyes the experience uh, of the Sandinista revolution, of the ATC organizing in the countryside, uh, because it's very, there's a lot of circulation of fake news uh, about what's happening here in Nicaragua, but what's also with what's happening in the peasant movement around the world and the gains that the peasant movement has made both here in Nicaragua and around the world. So that's why we have our delegations. Uh, just really quickly here to go uh, cerrando to finalize, to conclude. <laughs> uh, our most recent delegation that we organized in February of 2020, so just recently, um, we had a couple of different goals in mind. First and foremost, of course, to share the experience of the ATC in the countryside, the organizing it does both with farm worker unions and agricultural cooperatives and the construction of food sovereignty here in Nicaragua with uh, a base of agroecology and also the political and ideological training that is organized by the ATC and La Via Campesina here in Nicaragua, but also at the Central American level. But another main objective of this most recent delegation was to study and remember the life of 
uh, General Agosto Calderon Sandino, uh, known here in Nicaragua as the General of Free Men and Women, who rose up in arms in the 1920s and early 1930s against the US Marine occupation here in Nicaragua. So taking a very clear stand against US imperialism, was able to kick out the Marines with uh, a tiny little army that just started with 27 people and whose story and, uh, really inspired the revolution that continues to live on today in Nicaragua. So with that, uh, I will conclude. I'm gonna turn off the video here because I'm going to do simultaneous translation for Gusto so you can hear what Teresa has to say, but uh, thank you again for having us and Viva Sandino. Thank you Thank so you. much, Enrica. Thank you. Um, so our last presenter is uh, Clarissa Brands uh, from the Task Force of the Americas. Uh, Clarissa participated in the delegation Sandino Vive, the one that the one that went to Nicaragua in February, and she will talk to us about her experience, what she saw, etc. So welcome, Clarissa. And when we finish, we will. Um, Answer if there's any questions, we answer them at the end. Thank you, Alicia, and thank you, Fausto and Erica and Raymond for interpretation. It's great to be on this presentation with everyone. Um, I have 28 slides to show in 20 minutes, so I'm going to kind of fly through them and we'll have question and answer at the end for everybody. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load up my presentation now. Let me see. Let's see this one. Uh oh, it's not starting. Okay, try again. Hold on, let me try that again. I hope this is it. Let's see. Oh, it's not working. Sorry about this. It's not forwarding this time. Hmm. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, so the delegation in February, it was, um, we were there to see how the Sandinista and the San, um, San, Sandinismo and agroecology and agriculture um, and the revolution continuing simultaneously. Um, and this is the del this is most of the people in the delegation. We had people from um, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Ecuador, Canada, and the U.S. And here, this is the Francisco Morazan School up just outside of Managua. This is where we began and end, ended our delegation. Um, a lot of uh, education and sharing goes on here. Um, this is the classroom at, at the school where we've met a few times. Um, the woman in the middle here, the young woman right here, her name is Yvonne Miranda Tapia, and she was a niece. She's the niece of a Sandinista hero, uh, Ulysses Tapia, and she um, uh, she she teaches. She goes around and teaches about peasant pedagogy, which I find really, really interesting. Um, the horizontal education um, that is not top down, it's not just teacher student, but there's a lot of sharing that goes across all kinds of, you know, everybody from people who are highly educated to people who are working in the field and everything in between. So that, that was an extremely inspiring um, talk from her. Um, and this is a, there's a few people from my delegation and I just like this, shy, this slide because it shows job is in the background and there's um, just the, the, this, the kind of solidarity between the, the Bolivarian revolution and the Sandinista revolution and that their struggles are the same or very similar. And so that's why I like this slide and, and to show some of the people that are on our, on our delegation. Um, these are just three of the um, youth that are um, that were um, on our delegation. They're Ayala graduates, so the Ayala, the I I A L A, the schools, the agroecology schools. Um, it was really interesting to get to talk to them, to get to know them, 
to find out what it is that inspires them and how they how they've inspired me to come out and talk about this and uh, share this as horizontal education these new ways of thinking ways of being um, very open-minded and just really inspirational so i really enjoyed talking with them getting to know their perspective on on the country um, let's see yeah some of them weren't from nicaragua so they were in Nicaragua and feeling much safer to be in Nicaragua than in their own country, Honduras or, or the Dominican Republic. Um, so you can see these statues of Sandino. So this is Sandino. We saw them all over Nicaragua. And it just reminds you of the Sandinismo that's alive throughout the country, um, that the, the struggle continues, the revolution continues. We uh, visited Sandino's home. Actually, it was his father's house, but he, he lived here for part of the time. We learned about his life and his upbringing and maybe some of the things that inspired him um, to, to, to have a revolution in the first place. So it was very interesting. And here's his, here he is here uh, standing on the right, his father um, sitting and stepmother, and I believe it's half-brother, I'm not sure, stepbrother. Um, and then this, we went out to communities and to see what people were doing in the communities. So we were, this is the community of um, Marlon Alvarado. There's 39 families out there and um, it's a cooperative and they meet, uh, the community meets their needs, needs cooperatively. So some people are growing the rice that you see here on the table, other people are growing, having chicken, other people vegetables uh, and they trade uh, as, as needed. And the ATC has been working with them um, for many, many years. Um, and so we'll see some of the, the, pro the projects they're working on. Um, so I, I think this, her name is Ermita Vega, but I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, this, this is one of the families, she's one of the women that had this beautiful farm. She's growing pineapples and all kinds of things in her farm. And so we were talking about um, agroecology and what it means to her, what it means to the community and um, how she's able, how, how she's able to, to meet her own needs and her family's needs and the community needs. Um, this is Carnavalia. This is a very interesting plant. I was interested in it because it's a cover crop and it's uh, beans. Obviously you could see the, the long uh, seed pods here it's used for uh, protecting the soil and um, fixing nitrogen in the soil, keeping it from eroding, um, and it's grown often with other crops. So you can see these other crops in the back, in the background back here, uh, color crops. And here are some seeds. So this man here, I don't remember his name. I don't think I wrote it down. But he um, he was telling us about the seeds and how important seeds are to his community. And I like this because he was he's holding this big bucket of uh, seeds, and they're huge. <laughs> you have in your hand really, really big, much much larger than a bean that we're used to. Um, and some of the important things that he discussed with us were uh, about the cover crop itself, and also about seed sharing, collecting, and seed sharing you know, within the community. Uh, a lot of communities we went to did have some kind of seed reservoir so that they had, they didn't have to go to some, you know, agri-corp to buy seed and get stuck buying seed or hybrid seed that they're actually collecting their own, growing their own, what's called true to type varieties or heirloom varieties so that they're, they're food sovereign so they have food security. Uh, this was a really interesting project that somebody did in the community. They had, um, it's, a, it's about a foot or two feet of rice holes. And so the, the pigs have this, this pen here. And the rice holes are from the rice that's grown across the way, across the street, and that in, in their plot. And then the rice holes are used in the pigs. So it's, it's sanitary, it's easy to clean, and it has no smell. So there's no disease, there's no flies. Um, I'm just, yeah, I was very impressed with this. It was one of the things that, um, and then, you know, when, when it works for one farmer, one family, then they can tell that to other people who want to do something similar, like how, similarly how they can manage livestock or, or pigs in this case. And it's this farmer to farmer transition of information. So that's that horizontal sharing 
of information that, that we often hear about. Um, and then from there, we went up to um, um, a community called Santa Julia, and um, this is a women's cooperative. They grow food for themselves, and they also grow coffee. So they're 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 um, they're a coffee cooperative as well. Um, the ATC has been working with this community for many many years, and they've helped them purchase coffee processing equipment to make it much easier for them to um, to make coffee, so they can sell it for uh, to supplement uh, their income. Uh, and then there was some good news uh, just last, or yeah, just last month, March of 2020, they got their well water online. So it's it's a really really big issue uh, for them in the community. I'm so happy to hear that because when we were there, um, they had water, I guess, trucked in or something. Um, so now they have water that they'll have access to. Um, another thing I wanted to say, Leah, this one, the lady on the left here, she was my madre when I was staying there and she's the secretary of the cooperative and she had a lot of really good information about um the community itself and uh what what it was they were coming from like the the struggles it just to get to this point uh, a lot of them came from domestic violence situations so it was dangerous to be uh, at their home and um they went through the neoliberal 90s, which was a terrible struggle. And then now they're here with the help of the ATC and Via Campesina and also um, the uh, Ortega government. Um, and Leah, uh, this was very important for her to stress that in order to achieve what they wanted to achieve, they would, um, they would one, have to be organized, which they did do. They organized a lot of work and also make sure that they ask. So they ask for help from the government and the ATC helping them and other, probably other people that I don't even know about. So it was a very inspiring three days that we spent there, although it was super windy. Um, <laughs> um, so here just, um, this is the, the, the peasant way of roasting coffee. This is Blanca, uh, a young woman that was on our delegation. Here on the left are the raw beans and then the cooking over a fire, roasting them on the right. And then another thing they, we did when we were there was they wanted to show us well, how to make a compost pile. So we helped uh, make compost. And so it was a uh, um, um, plant matter that was taken from, from the area on site and then they wanted compost in this area. So we built it in this area. Um, and so, and miraculously, it's going to be ready in four months, so probably in two and a half to three months, it'll be ready to put out uh, in the field. Uh, this is Leah. This is her coffee plantation, her plot. She grows, um, she grows obviously coffee. You can see the coffee there, the kind of shorter ones below the, the trees, the small trees. And then beans and other food that she consumes with her family. And also three types of bananas. Um, and she's uh, she just she we we walked through a plot and through other people's plots just to see what it was look what it looked like and one of the things that I thought was really impressive was that um, uh, she actually has this plot as do other women in the community and, and probably in Nicaragua uh, the plot is actually in her name so that the the land title is in her name as a woman which I was very impressed with that's that's definitely progress. Um, here is the school on the left, the store right here. It's their school, one kind of, one teacher, many grades kind of school. Um, so there, there, there is a concern that the, the kids won't want to stay in the community. So they have community programs, they have school, they have, um, yeah, other, other things that go on to try to keep the community or keep the kids in the community, keep them from leaving the community. Also, Leah reminded us that they're working on reducing teen pregnancy, which they have since they started a program by 80%. And that's quite, that's quite amazing. And yeah, so we're gonna leave this community. We're gonna head out of north of Managua. Um, and okay, so one of the things I just wanna say in general about the Ortega government, everything that has been going on since, since 2007, 
um, they have really good roads and really good infrastructure. I was really, really surprised. Um, some of the roads are better than the roads in the Bay Area. So I can say that. Um, um, they're about 97% electrified in the country. So almost, it's almost reached everybody. And I think when Ortega came in, it was in the 50% pile. I can't remember for sure. I can be corrected on that. Um, they also have universal health care, which right now people are um, um, maybe thinking it's not so bad to have that in this country. But they have universal health care, so no matter your income or your, or your age or whatever, um, whether you have a job or not, you have health care, which is really impressive. Um, yeah, that's about it for that one. Um, also, so, uh, the 19th of April, we were there as the a National Day of Cooperatives. And it's significant because as part of the Sandinista Revolution um, and, and Sandino started the first cooperative in Nicaragua. So they kind of go hand in hand, this cooperative and this ecology, or agroecology and sort of food sovereignty is very important to the um, Sandinista Revolution. So it was good. It was fun to be there on that day and celebrate um, that day. Uh, we went up to Somoto in the north part of the country, um, which is not too far from Honduras. And we, the Union of Cooperatives, and they're a large, well, they're a union of cooperatives, so they work with cooperatives. And they do all kinds of things, um, helping them with production and, and organization, all kinds of things. There's a lot of things. They also have these um, silos, which is part of their food reservoir. And so there's, there's uh, all kinds of beans and corns and probably other uh, seeds in these silos. And if you look on the right side, um, some of those, there's two, one or two silos over here on the right that has, it, it holds beans that go to Venezuela um, for the Las Manitos program for children in Venezuela. So it was really good to see the actual silos where the beans are kept for that program. That was really, really cool. I don't know a whole lot about the program, but I'm sure someone else listening in does know a lot more than I do. Okay, so we left there. We went to a coffee, coffee cooperative in Otago municipality. I uh, survived barely, or some people survived through the 90s neoliberal era. Uh, ATC has been working with them closely. Um, they're a co co coffee cooperative, and I don't remember how many people, but it was pretty significant, um, maybe more than 40, I can't remember. Um, but we went there just to, to hear about their experiences, their struggles with growing coffee and the market, coffee market, and the rust problems that they have on their crops um, and issues such as those. Um, and then we went to uh, San Rafael del Norte and we were there on the day of the commemoration of Sandino's death and the reenactment of Sandino's engagement to Blanca. Um, and while we were there, we, um, this was really interesting. The mayor of Hinotega municipality spoke. He welcomed our delegation. He actually pointed out our delegation to everyone. And he spoke about all the advances in Nicaragua and about the coup attempt in 2018 and how that affected communities. And, and he was really, really happy to see delegation and he, would like to see more delegations uh, come to Nicaragua so that we learn for ourselves the truth about what is going on there and not just what we're hearing from our government, our state department. Um, so he, I'm just passing this on to everyone listening. Go down and visit Nicaragua and take a delegation down there and, and check it out. Um, this is just some delegates and with a statue of Sandino and his wife Blanca. And while we were there, we're still in, in San Rafael del Norte, and we were there and we had people with video cameras, maybe press, I'm not quite sure exactly who they were, but they were 
interviewing some of the delegates on the delegation. And I just put this photo in because I really like it as a symbol of solidarity in Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba. And I, I think that, um, I think it's really important to under, understand the struggles and the revolutions that are going on in all three countries that are very much the same, or at least similar. Uh, the fight against colonialism and imperialism has been going on for a long time, and all the other issues that um, that they're facing. And then we were asked to march in solidarity um, with the Nicaraguans at the end of the commemoration. So those are the photos, and I just wanted to say a few things. Um, one, I felt safe traveling around Nicaragua. I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel like it was an unsafe country. Some of the things that we hear in the U.S. and the news, um, I, I didn't see those things happen. I didn't see, I didn't, I felt safe. Um, I heard and saw, personally, the Sandinista revolution in action and that it's about caring about people, about people in the country. And it was, it was a very beautiful example. I saw it in Venezuela too when I was there uh, with the uh, Bolivarian Revolution. Um, and also I wanted to say one last thing. Nicaragua is an example of what other countries can do agriculturally to buffer themselves from the globalized big ag, international corporations, um, that just sucks money and resources um, out of countries and makes, makes the country very vulnerable to exploitation and commodity markets uh, fail or change and the economies crash. Um, and that agroecology addresses human concerns, political, um, environmental, climate change issues, and, and, and local government issues. So it's not just about agri agriculture, but it's about the whole society. So that is my presentation. I hope I did it in my 20 minutes. Um, and then um, I will give it back to Alicia. Thank you for your attention. Um, oops. What happened? Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, thank you, Carissa, very much. I wanted to let people know that Carissa wrote a wonderful article when she came back, uh, and it's in the uh, page of Task Force of the Americas. If you want to read the article, uh, taskforceamericas.org. <clears throat> and I have been uh, looking at the questions that were coming um, in, uh, as you guys were speaking, um, one of the questions that we have is like, somebody wants to know if you can explain a little bit more plot. <clears throat> is, who is gonna do that? Um, you are mute. Uh, okay. I'll still will explain. Okay. Damon, are you ready? <laughs> Yeah, he's there. Uh, Vía Campesina es el movimiento mundial de campesinas y campesinos. Y la CLOP, por sus siglas, es la coordinadora latinoamericana de organización del campo. So, la Vía Campesina is the worldwide uh, international movement. And the CLOC is the movement in Latin America. Uh, CLOC means the uh, Latin American Coordination of Peasant Organizations. Tienen el, tienen el mismo funcionamiento, solo que eh, la CLOC está más desarrollada porque usa el mismo idioma. Por ejemplo, en África, en África tiene varios idiomas, Europa, Asia. América Latina usa el español por lo general y tiene mucha identidad política e ideológica como América Latina. The, the, uh, the one difference is that the, the clock uh, works uh, in, in Spanish, in one language. It's for all of Latin America. 
And uh, whereas uh, in other regions of the world, uh, the, um, there are many languages, there are numerous languages uh, depending on where the peasant organization is from. Uh, and uh, so the uh, cohesion and uh, ideological cohesion and coordination is stronger in uh, Latin America uh, within the clock than uh, throughout uh, the world with uh, La Via Campesina. Tiene dos identidades. Primero, el respaldo y apoyo a la revolución bolivariana. Y el segundo, el apoyo a la revolución cubana, que son como la, la, la revolución cubana porque nos marca la tendencia de que eh, el socialismo es una alternativa más avanzada que el capitalismo y menos cruel que el capitalismo. So the, there are two uh, things that uh, processes that the uh, clock supports. One is the Bolivarian Revolution uh, in uh, base mainly in, in Venezuela and, and other countries in Latin America and also the Cuban Revolution. And the clock uh, considers that uh, uh, socialism, the socialism that is in Cuba, is, uh, is better than uh, uh, and less cruel than the, the uh, capitalist system that uh, exists uh, throughout the world. OK. Um, are you done, Fausto? Yeah? OK. Um, I have another question. Uh, how the coronavirus has affected ATC ability to continue international cooperation? Uh, for example, supporting development of agroecology with, in Venezuela. I don't know who can answer that question. Bueno, eh, la, nosotros no estábamos preparados para enfrentar la pandemia. Uh, we aren't ready to uh, <coughs> address the pandemic. Sin embargo, a como explicó la compañera con las fotografías, Nicaragua tiene un alto acompañamiento a la salud comunitaria. However, as uh, was stated earlier in uh, Carissa's presentation, uh, the, uh, our, our government is, uh, has a very strong community health uh, system en Nicaragua that empezamos, accompanies the population. En Nicaragua empezamos a prepararnos contra la pandemia en el 29 de enero de, de este año, 2020. We started work uh, to fight the pandemic uh, at the end of January 2020. Cada país ha, ha usado su propio método para enfrentar la crisis. Each country in the world has used its, its own approach uh, to uh, confront uh, the, the pandemic. <coughs> Hay un protocolo internacional que ha aprobado la Organización Mundial de la Salud. There's also a protocol that the World Health Organization has uh, 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 developed that can be used by all the countries. Nicaragua no ha declarado ninguna cuarentena y sin embargo nos estamos tomando muchas medidas de higiénico sanitaria nosotros. Up to now, Nicaragua hasn't declared a quarantine, but however, there are a, a series of measures that have been taken to protect the population against the pandemic. Sí, necesitamos controlar eh, todo lo que es el, la limpieza de manos, eh, los objetos que tenemos en, que, con los que trabajamos, la ropa, los zapatos, todo hay un control sanitario que se ha dado mucha capacitación aquí en Nicaragua. We have been uh, uh, raising the awareness of the population regarding the different measures that, that need to be taken, such as washing one's hands, one's tools, uh, the, uh, the shoes, the clothing that one has, uh, 
to avoid uh, the uh, propagation of uh, the uh, virus. Hay brigadas populares de salud en la calle. Brigadas de salud. We also have in the streets uh, health brigades. Por eso nosotros estamos llamando. El, el virus es un poco más urbano, menos rural. Entonces estamos hablando de que el sector campesino produzca alimentos porque puede ser que haya hambruna y necesitamos controlar a nivel este, de la siembra de alimentos en este país y en otros países de América Latina. Uh, in the, the problem is mainly urban. It's an urban problem. Uh, it's where the, the seriousness of uh, this uh, pandemic is greater. In the countryside, uh, the risks are, are lower and uh, we have to focus on uh, producing food, not just in Nicaragua, but throughout Latin America, because there is a risk of, uh, a, um, of a, a famine. Uh, that in the upcoming months there can be a crisis, a food crisis that can occur. Estamos trabajando a, ni a nivel de esta aplicación de Zoom con la Comisión Política de la CLOP y la, la Comisión Política de, de Centroamérica con los líderes y el 15 de abril vamos a iniciar el YALA y Simuleo a través de la opción eh, en línea virtual. Yes, and we also are uh, coordinating with the different uh, peasant organizations that are part of the CLOC throughout Latin America. Uh, and on the 15th of uh, April, we will have a meeting, a virtual meeting to uh, address these issues. Yeah? Okay, I have other question, but I'm going to be reading uh, the questions because some of them are long and, and I don't see it. <laughs> it's very small. Okay, one. Uh, thank you for the beautiful presentation. Hello, Fausto and Erika. I miss both of you. This is Sarah Roche. Um, okay. Um, uh, I send my love to all the brave and inspired communities Campesino in Nicaragua. I have a question about conditions in Nicaragua during the pandemic. In the US, social movement leftists are discussing the urgent need to support the development of food sovereignty and co cooperative due to um, the severe economic crisis in working poor communities that are experiencing mass unemployment due to the epidemic, to the pandemic. Uh, uh, campesinos in Nicaragua have been leading the struggle and winning. Can you talk about the victory of food sovereignty in Nicaragua? Um, and particularly how this will support Nicaragua be prepared to meet the nutritional needs of their people during the pandemic? Saludos, Sara. Hola, Sara. Hola, Sara. En Nicaragua es... Eh, antes Nicaragua importaba productos alimentarios. Uh, before, uh, in the past, Nicaragua was a food importer. Por ejemplo, este año hemos producido cuatro millones de quintales de frijoles. Uh, this year, this past year, we were able to produce uh, 400 million pounds of beans, or 400, 4 million quintales. Nicaragua consume 2 millones de quintales de frijoles. And we eat uh, uh, about half that amount of, uh, frijol, of uh, beans. Tenemos frijoles para, darle a, para mandar a El Salvador y a Honduras y a Costa Rica si fuera necesario. So we have uh, extra, extra beans that we can uh, send to our, our neighbors in El Salvador, Honduras, and Costa Rica. El, el tema de la pandemia 
dije que es más urbana. Sin embargo, puede ser que llegue al campo, pero mientras esto ocurra, los campesinos eh, tienen que sembrar eh, la producción agrícola, alimentos, tienen que producir alimentos. The, the uh, threat of the pandemic is uh, greater in the urban areas, but it could also reach uh, the countryside. However, uh, the peasants uh, have to produce uh, the food to feed themselves and the, the population. Entonces nosotros estamos dándole una mucha prioridad al tema de la producción de alimentos para lograr tener más, más control. En otras palabras, para poder garantizar la soberanía alimentaria, pues hemos logrado buenos programas de gobierno y también del sector campesino. Creo que eh, tenemos, no vamos a tener problemas de hambruna porque vamos a seguir produciendo alimentos. En Nicaragua en este mes de abril eh, se preparan los suelos porque en mayo son las lluvias y ahí empieza nuevamente la producción de maíz, frijoles y hortalizas. So uh, we're, we're focusing uh, very much on uh, food production uh, this year. Uh, the uh, first uh, planting cycle uh, is going to start in May. So now in April, uh, peasants are preparing the, the land and they're preparing themselves to sow uh, beans, corn, and other uh, basic uh, foodstuffs that uh, people eat here in the countryside, in, in, in throughout the country. Okay. Um, okay, we go. We have two or three more questions, and we have 15 minutes to go. Uh, so, from Savannah Landau, how is the local community in Blue Seal and Corn Island protecting themselves from the pandemic? Eh, mira la no sé si ustedes han visto las estadísticas de América Central en el caso de Nicaragua tenemos cinco casos de coronavirus uno ya salió maybe you yeah maybe you have seen uh, the uh, latest figures regarding the uh, coronavirus pandemic in uh, Central America in Nicaragua, we have uh, five confirmed cases of son casos, uh, coronavirus. Todavía son casos importados, no son transmisión local. And the, these uh, cases uh, are of people who came in, came to Nicaragua from abroad. We don't have a community uh, a propagation yet. In, in, or we don't have propagate, community pro, uh, propagation of the virus in Nicaragua at the present time. Uno llegó de Panamá y ya salió, ya salió libre sin problema. El segundo llegó de Colombia y falleció porque tenía VIH y tenía otros problemas. El, el tercero es una mujer que vino de Estados Unidos y los últimos dos de Estados Unidos. Entonces, Eh, en total activos están tres en, en los hospitales ya bajo atención médica. So, uh, of the five uh, confirmed cases, we have uh, one who came uh, from uh, uh, Costa Rica, another one uh, who, who has, has been cured, another person came from uh, Colombia, and he had a comorbidity, he had other uh, problems, he had uh, HIV, and uh, the, that person died uh, a few days ago. We also have uh, three other persons who came in from the US with uh, coronavirus, and uh, they are being medicated and uh, taken care of in the hospital at the present time. Nosotros creemos que va a haber más casos en el futuro, pero hay todo un, hay todo un seguimiento con la policía, con el Ministerio de Salud y con los líderes populares. We expect uh, that more cases will arise uh, and uh, we are uh, working uh, with, uh, we have the police, uh, 
the health uh, the health system and also the community community leaders who are involved in uh, the fight against the virus. Entonces, nos estamos seguros de que en la zona de Bluefields, eh, Bilgui, Isla de Maíz, va a haber siempre mucho control sanitario. So, at the present time, as uh, there are no cases in uh, Bluefields and Bilgui and uh, the Corn Islands, uh, and uh, there is a follow-up that's being done uh, with the uh, situation in those areas. Sin embargo, eh, la extrema derecha anda haciendo campaña eh, contra eh, el gobierno de Nicaragua. However, at the present time, uh, the extreme right is, uh, is leading a campaign against the government of Nicaragua. Hace, hace dos días apareció una foto con varios eh, muertos en Guayaquil, Ecuador. A few days ago, a, a photograph of uh, several uh, dead uh, people, of bodies of people that have died uh, in uh, Guayaquil, in the city of Guayaquil in, in uh, Ecuador. Y los, los golpistas en Nicaragua sacaron fotos diciendo que esa foto no era en Guayaquil, era en Managua. Nicaragua. And uh, some uh, people uh, distributed this photo photograph saying that it was a photograph of a, something that was occurring in uh, Managua, Nicaragua. Pero bien, es parte de la campaña de la extrema derecha. But that's the type of thing that uh, mm -hmm. occurs uh, often here where, uh, where you have a far right uh, that uh, does this kind of thing. Okay. Um, another question from Roger Harris uh, the to Fausto. The imperialists have considered resources to infiltrate, subvert, and undermine genuine peasant movements such as yours. How do you defend yourself from such a subversion? Nosotros, eh, bueno, recuerde que hay muchas hipótesis. Hay gente que dice que el virus, que el, que el COVID-19 lo produjeron los animales. Otros dicen que fue un laboratorio. Entonces, hay muchas hipótesis. There are many uh, uh, hypotheses that are uh, uh, that are being uh, published uh, regarding uh, where the what what is the origin of this pandemic. Sin embargo, nosotros tenemos mucha formación política porque hemos estado trabajando diez años de revolución, diecisiete años de neoliberalismo, mucha recuperación histórica del movimiento revolucionario y hemos logrado sostener la revolución. No, descarta, no, no se descarta que el imperio haga manipulación, pero estamos preparados para ese sistema. We have, we have a long history of, uh, uh, of uh, in here in Nicaragua. We had the 10 years of revolution, 17 years of uh, being in the opposition with uh, to a neoliberal governments, and then uh, another 13 years uh, in power now. And uh, we have a good memory, historical memory of uh, uh, what has happened over the years. And this is uh, something that helps defend uh, us defend uh, the revolution against uh, the uh, attacks from the imperialists. Lo mismo es con el pueblo chavista de Venezuela y con los compañeros de Cuba. This applies also to the what is going on in Venezuela and Cuba. Todas las noches en Cuba hay un hay un disparo de en un en un 
Museo Histórico de Cuba todas las noches, a las nueve de la noche. Every night at nine o'clock at a, a, a historical museum in Cuba, there is a shot that is uh, sent out. A esa hora, that is fired. Salen los compañeros desde sus casas a dar un minuto de aplausos por los miles de médicos que están enfrentando el coronavirus en el mundo. And so every night they've been doing this uh, for the last last while uh, and uh, all the neighbors people who live nearby they come out and they applaud for a minute uh, in honor of uh, the hundreds uh, of uh, and the numerous uh, doc medic uh, doctors and other medical workers of Cuba who are throughout in different countries of the world fighting the uh, this pandemic Y nos alegra ese ejemplo para los que somos de izquierda. And this is an example for, uh, that is uh, really uh, very, very important for us. Uh, those of us who are uh, progressive or of the left. Finalmente, estamos convencidos que el imperio es muy peligroso. Finally, we know that the empire is very dangerous. Pero acuérdense que el imperio está de rodillas frente a un virus que es de clase. Y pobre. But uh, at the present time, we also know that the, the empire is on its knees uh, facing this uh, coronavirus. Pero el peligro existe. But there, are, there is a danger at the present time. Tenemos que estar preparados porque ocurren esos fenómenos. We're living dangerous times and we have to be prepared. Sin embargo, yo, 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 yo creo que el pueblo norteamericano ya está más claro de los problemas del sistema capitalista. <coughs> and also, I, I, I believe that the North American, the people of North America are more aware of uh, the problems of uh, this uh, capitalist system that they live under. Gracias, Fausto. Um, thank you very much. It's just, we have five more minutes to go. Uh, as a question from that David Paul uh, asking about the status of the Manitos program, given restrictions on travel due to the coronavirus, and the limitations due to the U.S. sanctions. Okay, uh, Alicia, I will answer that question because it relates um, sure. to the sure. North American solidarity side of things. So for some people who might not know or they might have heard about this program, uh, Manitos, uh, it's a program that is uh, focused on uh, raising funds to be able to uh, send different kinds of material aid to Venezuela. And part of the initial vision for that was to be able to purchase products from uh, Nicaraguan cooperatives to send to Venezuela. Uh, of course, as David Paul's question lays out, there are challenges with being able to uh, send products right now to Venezuela, in part because of the horrific US blockade against Venezuela, but also uh, the main thing right now is because of coronavirus and the pandemic and putting a lot of these kinds of things on hold. So um, another thing I wanted to clarify is that that's a North American solidarity program. The ATC itself, um, it could be involved through the purchase of these kinds of products, like Carissa mentioned, the beans and other kinds of things. But that as a peasant movement, there are also existing agreements between the peasant organizations of Nicaragua and the peasant organizations of Venezuela for different types of peasant to peasant exchanges to build solidarity that are focused particularly on the agroecology schools or IALAs and also different kinds of brigades to to carry out different kinds of planting, exchanges of experiences, focused on supporting the construction of food sovereignty based upon uh, local experiences. 
uh, focusing on uh, solidarity with, with Venezuela. Um, so the Manitos program itself uh, right now is uh, a little bit on hold with the, addition, the initial uh, ideas of sending material aid to Venezuela, but I believe that they're functioning a lot or thinking a lot about the sanctions kill campaign and circulating different kinds of statements and petitions as well as different events um, about the horrific impacts of sanctions in Venezuela but also around the world that includes the, the numerous numbers of countries around the world that are being affected by uh, unilateral U.S. sanctions and perhaps uh, we can search for some additional information to circulate with everyone here who has participated in this event as an attendee for you to follow up specifically on that. Um, but yeah, thank you, David, for that question. Okay, thank you. I don't know if we have time. Uh, we have only a minute, I think, to go. Uh, and the next question is related to Venezuela, not to Nicaragua. So, uh, but the, the question is coming from Jason Clark. Uh, who is asking, what are some of the biggest myths around Venezuela? Food shortages, the Maduro government, etc. I don't know if we have time to go over this question, but you know, if, uh, if Fausto or anybody else wants to talk about it. Bueno, hay mucho que decir de Venezuela. Y yo llamo a, he estado conversando con algunos compañeros también de Estados Unidos, a que tenemos que cerrar filas para que no se genere una agresión al pueblo venezolano. Uh, there, a lot is being said about uh, Venezuela. Uh, and we've been working on this issue. We, uh, we believe that we need to uh, make a great efforts to protect Venezuela against uh, uh, aggression from the, from the empire. Entonces, tenemos que generar mucha solidaridad con el pueblo de Venezuela porque eh, no, no debemos promover más la guerra. Hay que promover la solidaridad, la paz y que la ayuda humanitaria ayuda a estos pueblos a salir de la crisis de la pandemia y después a superar esa crisis que teníamos de hace muchos años, que es la crisis del capitalismo salvaje. So we, we, we need to support the uh, Venezuelan people uh, with uh, giving them uh, material support, uh, funding, and uh, protecting them against uh, the imperial aggression, and also help them fight uh, the pandemic uh, in, in different ways. Uh, after that, uh, the fight will focus once again on uh, uh, on the uh, capitalist system. Finalmente, finalmente, vamos a, a trabajar eh, para eh, facilitar que en Venezuela se produzcan muchos alimentos para que los compañeros no puedan tener problemas futuros. Eso tenemos que trabajarlo y creo que eh, una vez que pase esta crisis Tenemos que enfocarnos en apoyar al pueblo venezolano y siempre saludar y respaldar con mucho orgullo el ejemplo del pueblo de Cuba en la medicina. And, uh, so we we have to work on this uh, issue uh, uh, and support Venezuela so that they can produce uh, all the food that they need. And also we mustn't forget uh, our brothers and sisters of uh, Cuba. Uh, and uh, uh, recognize, acknowledge the, the wonderful things that they do in the medical field. Okay, thank you very much. I wanted to thank you, Alliance for Global Justice, for allowing us to use their um, resources. And thank you to Fausto, Erika, and Carissa, and the translator, of course, and those behind who were working, helping us with the technical. Uh, this was great. Thank you. We have about 40, 42 people participating, um, and uh, which was great. And glad to work in with all of you. Be safe, stay home, and until soon. <laughs>